Hello on Monday the 7th of February. And I hope that you were all able to enjoy this past weekend despite the cold, wet and windy weather. An opening sentence for today. In the morning, Lord, you hear our voices. In the morning, we lay our requests before you and wait expectantly. May this day be full of God's presence. And our readings today are from Psalm 132, verses 1 to 9, and 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. I do really enjoy visiting the wide variety of stately homes which can be found all around our country. The wonderful architecture, splendid settings, marvellous decorations and all intertwined with fascinating background histories. Sometimes when you visit there are exhibitions which show how the property was originally used, the visitors that came to the grand parties, how the family who owns the property spent their daily lives, pictures of the huge numbers of staff which were employed to work there. This is how the property was intended to be used. These days it may well be maintained in a wonderful condition, but as I look at the exhibitions, I can't help but feel quite sad, because the property isn't being used as originally intended. It's not occupied and has effectively become a museum, a monument to the past. I do wonder what the designers and the original owners would make of this. Chapters 5 to 7 of 1 Kings are all about the building of the first temple in Jerusalem. King Solomon is working out his father David's vision and the result is a magnificent building far better than any stately home I can visit. We now come to chapter 8 of 1 Kings. And the property needs to be used. Otherwise, there's a great possibility that people will end up worshipping the building. Let's remind ourselves that the temple has been built as a permanent place for focus on God. To tie into this purpose, the Ark of the Covenant is moved in to occupy the prime position of importance. Before this, the Ark of the Covenant had been carried around by the people. It now has a permanent home and the people of Israel have a permanent place for the focal point of their worship. Today we have celebrations taking place for the 70th anniversary of the accession to the throne. And with this in mind, I'm going to use the same prayer as I used yesterday. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your Church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for today's prayer points, let's give thanks for the stability in our country over the past 70 years. Let's pray for good relationships between the generations. A 
and let's give thanks for the leadership example given by our Queen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our blessing for today, to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour, glory and power, for ever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always.